Okay, the method for data representation is very similar to research summary. Keeps it, you know, nice and easy. You don't have to memorize a whole bunch of different things. But you're not going to always have all three steps. So, step one, if it exists, which it might not, you're going to underline um, your reason. Okay, you know, like what is the purpose of this passage? What are they going to talk about? Um, sometimes it doesn't exist. Sometimes they literally just give you a chart and no explanation. Most of the time, there's a couple sentences at least that will explain what's going on, but there's not going to be as much information generally as if it was a research summary. The next thing is again, if it exists. You can circle method. Now method is again not as likely to show up. Sometimes they'll, they'll explain the method for which they you know were able to determine whatever the plot points are on a graph but a lot of times they just will say you know the scientists were interested in this phenomenon and then here's here's the results here's a chart they won't explain how they were able to get that chart but sometimes they do and if they do then they're going to ask about it so if there's a purpose if there's a method they will ask about those things so if they exist you want to make sure that you really you know mark it up now three this will exist. If it didn't, then uh, it wouldn't be a data representation. Is you're going to draw an asterisk, a heart, a star, you know, whatever you want, as long as you're consistent. Um, the results, slash sometimes they're not really results uh, because you don't have any kind of experiment. So the, you know, tables, graphs, etc. Now, when you do your asterisk, you're going to do a similar thing, although you're going to have a lot more variables generally to deal with. So you want to mark relationships. So you're going to mark the relationships. You're going to mark key points. So what I mean by key points is, um, you know, if I have two lines, the point at which they intersect would be a key point for instance so that would be a key point you're not always going to have key points it also depends on if you have a graph or a chart for instance um, or like you know a tea table that sort of thing but uh, you're going to want to mark them so you know just circle them or draw an arrow to them just indicate that they're there so that you can easily find them at some other point um, the next thing you want to do is you want to really make sure you understand um, your different variables. So, you know, you want to go through and kind of figure out, like, what is the X, what is the Y. So, X, Y, etc. So, um, you know, X, if X is one thing and Y is another, then the relationship is always going to be as X increases, decreases, y increases, decreases. So that kind of goes back to your first part of this, which is relationships. And then uh, you also want to make sure that you know what the units of measurement are. They're not, they're not super, you know, tricky about that. So they're not going to have a bunch of questions where they ask for something in Fahrenheit and then the table gives you it in Celsius, for instance. But if you understand what the units of measurement are, a lot of times that goes a pretty decent way to understanding what the overall idea or theme of the chart is. So you want to make sure that you know, like, okay, we're talking about, um, we're talking about temperature in terms of Kelvin. Okay, temperature in terms of Kelvin. Um, Generally, when we're dealing with Kelvin, we're dealing with, you know, 10,000 Kelvin, for instance. So we're dealing with something that's extremely hot. 
okay, so that's generally not going to be something that would be within your, you know, kind of like student laboratory. So the more that you can understand what the units are, what exactly is going on, the easier it is for you to actually answer the questions once you get to them. Okay. Um, and then the last thing, um, the last thing is you want to note differences between charts if you have two. So uh, note differences in charts. A lot of times the charts will be the same data points, but different x and y um, axes if it's a graph, for instance. So it'll be, you know, we're testing these 10 things under this set of conditions. And then they'll give you another chart and say under this set of conditions. So you want to note the differences. So like everything increased in chart one, but the second variable decreased in chart two. Great, that tells you something about that variable. And that conclusion is something that can be drawn from your data and therefore is a conclusion that they can ask you about later on in the questions. Okay, cool. So, as you can see, it's pretty similar to what you are doing with Research Summary, but there's a little tweak in terms of the starring the results part is a little bit more important because, you know, it's data representation. It's all about data. So if you can't understand the table, it's going to be a lot harder to deal with everything else. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at a passage.